Hello everybody, Sanier, Engineer, MBA, I'm Investor, and in today's video, I want to talk about Editas. Editas Medicine, I want to talk about all of them in this video. Of course, this video is based on Ye's uh, tweet uh, thread, and again, Ye has done an amazing job uh, covering the CRISPR's landscape, and I said, you know what, I could cover their corporate presentation, or I could cover the condensed work of Yair, who actually has done a really good job providing updates as to what this company is doing with each of his portfolio programs. Now, I do want to mention, I made uh, this video on top of a request I got recently on one of my YouTube comments. So guys, I do read your comments. I try to respond to every single comment. Um, so thank you so much for participating in the community. Um, I know someone asked me to make a video of Editas uh, like two weeks ago, maybe three, and here it is. So hopefully to whoever you were, I forgot to who commented that. Hopefully you appreciate it. Okay, so Editas uh, gave a couple of uh, updates for their uh, company in 2023 as they started this year. Um, so uh, if you take a look at here, it's not the first time Editas is changing its clinical focus. Now Editas is in reprioritization of its portfolio focusing on hemoglobin, uh, opathies, and in vivo uh, genome editing and discontinuing its investment uh, in retinal diseases and its preclinical pre wholly owned program, INK programs. Editas uh, intends to prioritize resource allocation towards Edit301. So it looks like Edit301 is the leading program uh, to, to, for this program, uh, company at this point is, of course, it is treating sickle cell disease, uh, probably the most known disease at this point for all investors in the CRISPR landscape. Um, and it looks like, uh, they announced uh, positive clinical data from the first two patients, phase one, phase two in Ruby trial. Uh, so first patient treated with a 16.4, 45% fetal. Uh, hemoglobin five months after treatment, 45% is definitely, definitely going to get you there. I believe the figure was 20, 20 25%. If you had uh, a fetal uh, hemoglobin after treatment, that you could probably have a program that successfully, uh, potentially cures uh, sickle cell disease. So obviously they're well over that. Uh, so we go through this. Uh, Editas is discontinuing its investment in the retinal disease. I think the retinal play, the Edit 101, people thought this was the main driver of this company. And I always found it extremely risky for a company that has had uh, unstable leadership to basically venture in something that no CRISPR company is doing right now, at least in the public side of things, public CRISPR companies. And two, it's so risky um, for this company because, you know, you have these diseases you can tackle like from edit 301 again, basically sickle cell disease. It's a safe play. You know, there are other, other companies doing it. You know, your technology is not really proven in a sense where you don't have a CRISPR based FDA approved drug right now. You're one of the oldest, uh, CRISPR companies in the space. You're the oldest public CRISPR company, yet you're not able to have any success in any of your programs. It's quite an embarrassment, right? So, I think this company has done a good job just shifting over 301, but obviously they're abandoning uh, 101 and 103 at this point, at least pausing it. Uh, I believe we made a video on this when they first announced it. I think my guess is they're probably gonna look for a partner to recoup those costs and maybe, you know, take put this program in the backseat for now and then as they develop 301 further, uh, they'll turn on the engine again for uh, the, um, the retinal side of things. That's my sus speculation, but you know, who knows with this company, right? Uh, they're also discontinuing their 202 programs with solid tumors. Again, this this company, you're gonna see that a lot of this, these were discontinuing, pausing. I mean, this company is really shifting, right? 2022 was all about shifting this company overall again. I mean, uh, in 2021, um, they had three CEOs in the last three years. Uh, and they've lost a couple of uh, key execs since then. So, you know, it makes sense for this company to restructure. I mean, investors are, are looking into companies like CRISPR Therapeutics, NTLA, Beam Therapeutics, Verve Therapeutics, Caribou, 
prime medicine. Now you have choices, right? As opposed to Editas when they first IPO, you really didn't have that much choice for a couple of years, right? So things have changed a lot in the recent years. And I think people are starting to realize that at Editas and, you know, they, they need to prioritize that change ASAP or else, you know, this company is going straight in bankruptcy. I mean, I, I, I realize they have cash in the balance sheet, but that doesn't mean they can just, you know, spend, spend, spend and have no success, you know. Uh, so we take a look. Another pillar of innovation for Editas is clinical refocusing its intention to develop milder patients, preconditioned regimens, HSC pay transplants, okay? Uh, 301 insights to develop next generation of CRISPR medicines, including in vivo editing of HSCs. I'll be honest with you, this company should not be looking at next generation technology at this point. Uh, they should have success with sickle cell disease, get that program out, get more data, you know, get it FDA approved by 2024, 2025 potentially, and then move forward with that, right? But, you know, I understand, you know, they need to work on other things. It makes sense, right? Every other CRISPR company is doing it, why not? Um, they do have an existing partnership with the big pharma company, Bristol Myers. Uh, so obviously that's a big plus. Uh, a couple of IPs there being from Broad Institute, of course, having Zeng support in a sense. Uh, okay, so ability to issue exclusive and non-inclusive Cas9, Cas12A licenses. Okay. The CSO will step down from his role as part of this change and it will depart effective on the third uh, March of thir uh, 31st March of 2023. Editors have become for a new CSO technology background for the disc. I mean, look, you're losing your CSO within the first Q of Q quarter of this year. I mean, look, guys, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I think I, and I, 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 before I go in the negatives, they did say here, let's take a look here. They did say that, you know, they want to provide additional update by mid 2023. So that's about June, July of this year. Uh, those 20 patients for edit 301 for the Ruby trial, of course, that's for sickle cell disease. Uh, those are first patient trial for uh, uh, TDT there um, and provide clinical update for 301 by year end. So look, I think this company has an angle. I think if, 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 I mean, look, guys, this is not financial advice. I have no reason to start providing leadership advice for this company, especially not me. I don't, I'm not qualified for that uh, level. Um, but if you were to ask my opinion on what I think this company should do at this point, I mean, they've had lots of instability with leadership, which obviously we're again seeing this year again in the first quarter in March. This company has had failed lead programs. Let's call it the way it is, call the spade a spade. I mean, they've had failed programs. I think right now they should just wholly focus on 301. You know, they said those 20 patients by year end. I think they could go even further than that, but let's just say 20 patients and you get 30 to 40 patients by 2024 year end. And then 2025, you, you know, or you know, around that time, you submit for FDA approval. And meanwhile, you try to look for partnerships and maybe you know, increase, maybe sell stake of Editas 301 a little bit to make some cash, just like CRISPR Therapeutics did with Vertex, you know, so you can add to your balance sheet and sort of secure yourself from any potential bankruptcy, lean your company out a little bit. Um, you know, stabilize your leadership. I know it's easier said than done, but really, I think this company should just focus on 301. I, I really think this company will have success, but the the downside of this is this success will come in not anytime soon. It'll be in a while. And it's fortunate for them because things are going well for CRISPR, the landscape like Verve Therapeutics and CRISPR Therapeutics. Uh, you got some good uh, things going on with um, Caribou, your beam therapeutics, obviously, um, and prime medicine coming out of the gate like that. Um, I think there's something that they can sort of benefit from the success of others, specifically from sickle cell disease with 301. I think they can make it happen. Uh, for all investors of Editas, if you're holding on to them, you know, again, not financial advice, it's just free education information, take it or leave it. 
I would say hold on to it. Hold on to it. I mean, look, you've already seen the worst at this point. Um, hold on to it. Play it out. See how it goes. Obviously, things get even worse by year end. Uh, and if they don't deliver on those, those those 20 patients, then you have to seriously consider if your money is really spent well uh, because there is an opportunity cost, right? Uh, and for people that not invested in Editas, I mean, look, the stock price has gone down just as like other CRISPR space companies. Whether or not this company should be the company you invest in, I mean, in my opinion, there are other companies in the CRISPR landscape that you probably will have a better probability rate of success, but hey, I could be totally wrong, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, do your due due diligence. Be careful, guys. I mean, this company, you know, although they've had, you know, minor success with Ed 301, they've had lots of failures in recent years from programs to leadership, and that's a big red flag. Um, but there's a way to turn this around. There is a way to turn this around because they do have IP exclusivity, like I mentioned. Um, and, you know, they, they have some history there, so with the broad institute anyway. So we'll see We'll see where we go from here, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think about Editas? Do you guys think there's a positive outlook? Do you guys are neutral on it or are you negative on it, right? Let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for year for the tweet. I'll end this video like this. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you have value, subscribe if you're not. And hopefully you have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday, guys. Uh, it's cloudy, rainy, uh, cloudish day here, but Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny. Good. Have a beautiful Sunday. Thank you.